Welcome back to our 30 day study challenge. We're on day 11 for cell signaling. Thanks so much for sticking with us this far. If you're just joining in, we're gonna do a quick content review and then some practice questions. And be sure to subscribe so you can check out all the other days of our 30 day biology study session, whether you're here for a review, a cram, or you just wanna refresh your biology knowledge. All right, let's get started. So it's important to remember with cell signaling pathways or signal transduction pathways that they're characterized by a signal transduction and a response. And we'll talk about what that means in just a moment. They are highly specific and regulated. So it can't just be any molecule that causes a response to happen in a cell. And many times one signal molecule can cause a cascading effect, releasing thousands of other molecules, amplifying a signal within a cell. And a lot of these pathways evolved from common ancestors millions of years ago, and they're conserved across many species. Another piece of biochemical evidence in our collection of evidence for evolution. Now we can have unicellular signaling pathways between organisms that are just single-celled, or we can have multicellular signaling pathways that happen within multicellular organisms, sending from one part of the body, one endocrine gland, all the way to another part of the body and having some pretty large effects. Now we have lots of different types of signals, especially within the human body. Autocrine signals go from one part of a cell to another. We can have synaptic signals, so these are gonna cross synapses and neurotransmitters. We can have paracrine signals, which are released from one cell and go to another nearby cell. Endocrine signals like hormones, which can travel across the bloodstream long distances. Maybe they're released by one gland, like the pituitary gland, and then they go a very long distance in the body to have many different effects. So very simply, when a ligand or that signal molecule binds to a receptor protein on the membrane outside the cell, it can cause a conformational change in the receptor, which results in the activation of this signal transduction pathway within the cell. Eventually those signals will cause something to happen, and we'll talk about what those effects could be, and they may even get to the nucleus of the cell, which is shown here. So they can get pretty complex. This is just one particular signaling pathway. If we have the activation of several different enzymes, we could have thousands of different proteins within the cell. This is why we call it an amplification response activated and turned on. So one, a few I wanted to talk about here are G protein linked receptors. So this is a type of protein that's across the membrane. It can receive a signal from something like a hormone, a neurotransmitter, another chemical messenger. And then we have activation when that signaling molecule binds, which causes the receptor to change its shape. And then that activates the G protein inside the cell, which is gonna to go to the next molecule, sending the message along. And then that can trigger a series of events in the cell, which leads to a specific response. Now, sometimes we get that message sent to something like a protein kinase. And these are enzymes that phosphorylate and they can add phosphate groups to other proteins. And a lot of times this activates the other proteins, so it changes the shape adding that phosphate group and that are gonna target other proteins that are involved in the signaling pathway. A lot of times we'll have secondary messengers involved too. These are small water soluble molecules that can quickly diffuse within the cell and they'll move to signal on other parts of the process. Cyclic AMP, calcium ions, these are all really common second messengers in signal transduction pathways. Another type of important part of cell signaling that's in the cell membrane are ligand gated ion channels. And so when they're activated, there's gonna be a flow of ions across the membrane, which is going to influence the membrane potential and then have an effect on electrical signaling within the cell. Okay, so let's talk about after all these signals are happening, we have our transduction within the cell. What is gonna happen when it gets to the nucleus or it gets to the location for its response? So a lot of times this is things like gene expression. It's gonna turn on a particular gene. We're going to undergo transcription. We'll get to that when we get to protein synthesis later on. So we'll have some other, other type of protein activity. We can even trigger apoptosis, which is programmed cell death. And a lot of times this is a good thing for the health of the organism. Many cancers arise because we have inactivations of these signaling pathways and programmed apoptosis is not occurring in cells that should be dying. So again, we can turn a gene on, we can have the activation of an enzyme, we can even trigger cell division, and we'll get into some of these specific signals a little bit more when we talk about the cell cycle and mitosis. I wanna mention hormones again very quickly. These are signals. We can have steroid hormones, which are usually cholesterols, and they can pass through the cell membrane. And then we have non-steroid, which are more water-soluble, and these usually are going to act with receptors on the membrane that'll cause a signaling pathway to start or interact with the receptor that allows it into the cell. All right, let's get to practice. We're gonna do a short one today. 
Here we have a really basic diagram of some of the things that we've been talking about. It's a very generalized, very simple cell signaling pathway. But what I want you to do is in each step, A, B, and C, I want you to talk about what is occurring in the particular pathway. And so you can go ahead and pause and jot this down or just do it in your head, but I think it does help if you write it down. And then we're gonna come back in just a moment and go over the answers. All right, are you ready? In step A, we have our ligand binding to our receptor that is going to start our signaling pathway, and the signal reception is going to be the initiation of our response within the cell. In part B, we have our cascade, our transduction, that is going to have the amplification response and transfers the signal from the membrane all the way to other parts of the cell, and in this case, we're going into the nucleus, and then we're having some effect on the DNA. So this could be transcription, this could be the initiation, of the production of an enzyme, or we could even have repression. We could have a particular target gene being not having transcription occur, so we could have that gene being turned off. But whatever this particular gene does, it's probably gonna have effects throughout the cell as well. All right, thanks so much for sticking with us this far. Tomorrow is feedback. We're gonna be talking about feedback loops, feedback mechanisms in biology, and it's gonna be day 12 of our 30-day study challenge. Now, if you've stayed with us this far, we're gonna keep going all 30 days and cover as many topics in biology that we can. If you're cramming or if you found this helpful, go ahead and share it with a friend and make sure you subscribe so you don't miss out on any days of our 30-day study challenge. Thanks so much for watching. Give this video a like if it's been helpful and I'll see you later.